Hi, my name is Morgan Little, and I play this, the Baroque cello. So one might think that getting into Baroque cello requires like a lot of gear, you gotta buy a lot of stuff, you gotta get the strings and the bow and the yada yada yada. But there's one thing that you can do that you can really get into Baroque style and you don't have to pay any money. That's holding the cello with your legs and not using an engine. So back in the day when the cello was being created, the technology to make an end pin like we have today just didn't exist. There wasn't the right kind of drills, they couldn't really figure out the, the holes that were needed, the metal was too expensive, you know, nobody wanted to put any wood in there because you might like crack the instrument. It just was hard. There were a lot of solutions though. People were always coming up with stuff, you know, sometimes they would put it on chairs, sometimes they'd put it on boxes, sometimes they would just stand with them sitting on something where they could stand with it. Another popular one was they would uh, drill holes in the back here and then put little straps on it so that they could walk around and play it. This was called processional style. However, the most popular and sort of the easiest method that people figured out how to hold the cello was just to hold it nicely with your legs. Now there are a lot of different ways to hold the cello with your legs, but the way that I teach and the way that I actually have found to be the most comfortable is a method made by a man named Romberg. Now Romberg was a virtuoso cellist around the time of Beethoven. He was a composer and he wrote a ton of music and most importantly he wrote this um, cello method in German. Now I can't speak German. So I can't give you guys a direct translation right now. But if you want, there's an English translated version on IMSLP that is pretty good. However, his instructions can be a little bit roundabout and a little bit hard to understand. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through my version of his instructions. So the first step, and probably one of the most important steps, is just find a chair that's the right height. So you're gonna be already looking for a lower height chair. Uh, a great way to measure this is if you can sit on the very edge of it and then bend your knees kind of like this comfortably, then it's a good height. If you're having trouble with this at any time, my go-to recommendation is just find a lower chair and see how that works for you. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sit on the absolute edge of your chair and then you're just going to set yourself up with good cello posture, which is relaxed, open shoulders and a sort of lifted neck and head. You want your feet to be as flat as they possibly can be on the ground. Uh, some people, you know, they look like this or they look weird, you know, their feet are all going every which way. This is a great way to tire yourself out. And you really want to set yourself up in a way that you're going to be able to hold up the cello for as long as you possibly can at a whack. Having nice flat feet gives you a nice strong support to base the rest of your technique off of. So now speaking of feet, you want to put your left foot a little bit closer to the left leg of the chair, like so. And you're going to take your right foot and you're just going to kind of stretch it out just a little bit over here. Now that we've got everything ready, we're going to put the cello on our body. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this back left edge right here and we're going to put that in this crook that we created by bending our left leg back. So we're just going to stick it right in there, just burn. And so you'll notice this sits nicely on this little shelf that's created that by crooking your, your leg and your knee here. And then you're going to have a slant towards your body and the right hand side is going to be touching your thigh. So now, after you've done that, you're going to take your right foot and you're just gonna slide it all the way back in and put a little bit of horizontal pressure and make another little shelf between your thigh and your right calf, which then will just lock it right nicely in place. Next, you're gonna let your whole thing slide out just a little bit so that you can just let the cello kind of fall back onto your chest. It's just gonna relax right there. And then you're gonna kind of reposition everything so that your lowest peg is in line with your eye blob and it should be about you know two or three fingers away from your eye. So now let's just do this a few times. You can do this together with me. I'm just gonna walk you through it so you can see it happen in real time just a few more times. So we have our cello down, left foot crook, left crook, right foot out. We're gonna take the cello back left edge, back left edge. We're gonna take it, we're gonna put it in there 
This part's gonna touch over here. We're gonna slide this in. We're gonna let this fall back just a little bit. We're gonna reposition it. Great, let's do that one more time. So, cello's down, left foot's crooked, right foot's out. Back left edge, we're gonna take it, we're gonna put it in that crook. This part's gonna touch over here on the right calf. We're gonna bring that leg in, gonna let it fall back just a little bit, and then I'm gonna reposition it. Now the first thing you notice when you're holding your cello like this is it's really vertical, and that's totally fine. This is what you're going for. Actually, by having the cello be a little bit more vertical and giving yourself space over here, what you're letting yourself do is to have this nice open posture and keep everything looking good, while at the same time giving your left hand plenty of room to do all this crazy stuff. Don't let anybody tell you that, you know, oh, you can't do thumb position when you're holding your cello with your legs. Because if you look at all that stuff, all those guys pretty much played like half of everything up in thumb position. So obviously they were doing it just fine. Now the second thing that you'll notice if you're doing this correctly is, is that you're not squeezing the cello to hold it up or you're not tensing or you're not doing anything weird. So the combination of having nice flat supported feet along with a nice posture up here and locking it in from the two axes means that you can just kind of let your, your feet sit there and let kind of the pressure of just having your feet on the ground hold this whole thing up. This is great for, you know, really long rehearsals. You can hold this up for a really long time. However, if you're practicing or if you're in rehearsal and, you know, the violins are doing something for like forever and you think, you know, why, why am I holding my cello up? It's totally fine to just, you know, let it sit on the ground. And then when it's your turn to play again, you just pop that sucker right back up. No big deal. So if you're having problems getting your legs around the cello, Again, my first recommendation would be find a lower chair. That usually solves all of the problems.